Hey everybody out there, I'm here with Greg Rapp, menu engineer, and very excited to talk with you know the community about menus and how you think about menus and why it's critical to a business, their bottom line and the user experience. So Greg, just tell us a little bit about yourself and like what is menu engineering? Because when you first were explaining it to me, it was really interesting. Well, menu engineering is a process, it's an art and science of taking the sales mix and the food costs, putting them together and figuring out what's selling, what's profitable, what's not, uh, popular, not so popular, profitable, and yep. we, we put together profiles on each item and then we look at the types of people that come into a restaurant and look at how they order. And some people want to read the whole menu and study it. Some people don't want to read a menu at all. They just want to know what's good. And so what we do is put together a, a menu that can talk to all the types of people hmm. and lay the menu out kind of like a grocery store is laid out for profitability. You know, it's all very strategic. And Interesting. Grocery stores are a couple hundred years ahead of the restaurant industry. They, they, uh, they rent their space to uh, the different manufacturers. We don't do that, but um, I use a lot of tools from the grocery stores, from department stores, how a person reads. I study how, how they, um, you know, the newspapers were in the business of getting people to read. So they know how a person reads and how an eye goes across a, a page. Um, magazines, same thing. That's so, interesting. So you kind of use tidbits and tricks from the different industries to kind of optimize for hospitality. Exactly. Huh. I pull everything over. It's really you know, interesting. When I'm working on a golf resort, for example, I'll look at Golf Magazine to study a golfer, to see what a golfer, um, what they drive, what, where they vacation, how much they spend, what they drink. You know, there's a lot of information out there and I just wheel it over to our side so we can study it, so we can find out more. And it's not putting a menu together. It used to be just going to the printer and having the printer put it together, but don't do that. And use different cardstock paper and you call it a day. Oh, I've done a lot of work with <laughs> Nina Paper. They're, they own all the fine papers. Yeah. And um, I've, I've actually done books for them on, for art directors. on uh, So they'll have tools to go um, help their restaurant clients hmm. because art directors used to used you used to have to arm wrestle to put a box around a menu item but uh, when the art director goes to the restaurant client and say says hey what menu item should we put a box around it kind of turns it around so really cool um, so this is a little bit of your background how did you get into menu engineering and, and why do you love uh, I, menus I was I was in school Washington State University and I was never a really good student, but I would, I would, uh, do, I'd work, and I would um, uh, lived in a hotel when I was going to school, and then this restaurant uh, went into a reorganization, and the wife got it in a divorce, and so she came to me and she said, uh, "I don't know anything about the restaurant business," and I said, oh, "Well, I know everything because I'm in hotel school." So yeah. together we learned that we. We did know a lot, and we turned it around and uh, pulled it out of the Chapter 11 in three months. That had wow. never been done. 90 in, days. In 90 days. That's the, remarkable. The volume was there. It was all the, the um, their liquor cost was at 53%, and the bartenders were having great parties. Okay, it's a long story, but <laughs> and that's for another day. It's but, a bar that I probably want to go to. There you go. Yeah. But, or at least hang out with the bartenders. Exactly, there. exactly. But... Um, but I, I went in and I turned it around and then I had to do a menu and I didn't know anything about menus. And the textbooks about menus in, in school were about the history of menus. Well, who cares how people ate in the 1800s? So like I say, I started studying and looking at where is the information? And, and then, then every week for the last 37 years, each week my, my, my jobs take one week to do. So I go in and I live and breathe that restaurant. I won't do any work where it's from afar. I found that never works. I have to go mm -hmm. find out wh what's going on with the restaurant tour. Like what's their culture like? What's their, their culture, brand? What, what's, what's their, their vision? Their brand, and let them be um, protect their brand and help them. You know, all these consultants on TV they go in and say, "Hey, you're really stupid, and uh, <laughs> here's here, your menu's wrong, and here's your menu. This yeah. is." 
But the minute they leave, that menu is going to fail because um, it's that consultant's menu. So my job is to go in, teach them the tools, help them, and I, you'll watch me step back and I let them create the menu and we do what I call menu whispering. I go in and I, the whole backbone is done for profitability and popularity, but I want them to go in and say, hey Greg, this item, I don't want to put it in that good spot. I want this item there. And, and so they're taking it and making it theirs. Yeah. And then we put it together and we test it. And um, I think it's really critical to have like your brand first, right? Totally. People put like, the reason why I love restaurants is everybody in it is so passionate. It's their livelihoods. A lot of time it's their culture, their family's history or some sort of history. And you want that to come across. So I think that's pretty amazing. And is you're going to you find a lot of this is going to come through with, um, uh, the experience. We're at, a, uh, 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 we're at a conference here in Phoenix talking about you know all the leaders in, in the restaurant industry and what we're hearing day in and day out is about culture and about the experience. Yeah. And building that experience, you don't think about it, but that each recipe that's on your menu is from somewhere. It could have been your grandmother's or maybe you stole it from some uh, yeah. restaurant when you were on a trip or you know so there's a story behind each item the same thing with with a wine list there's a story on why each wine made it to the wine list and you don't restaurants don't typically tell that story they just make a list and put the prices so how do you tell a story though on a printed menu well that's just it is i love ipad menus and i um uh, because you can get as much or as little information as when I was talking about some people want to read all the information on the menu and some people don't. Well, on an iPad menu, they can get as much or as little information as they want. Mm -hmm. So that's why it, it's coming. And, um, uh, and I've, I've, I've been working and testing some iPad menus that uh, it's just phenomenal success that we're getting just because we can um, give that experience to the people so they can they can go look at the winery if they want and they can see uh, a, a little video clip of Lucy and Ethel stomping on the grapes yeah. if we want to put that in or you know whatever it is but we want to teach people and get our food at a restaurant out of the commodity everybody's got a Cobb salad but why is our Cobb salad different better. and better yeah. and, um, and and why is it on the menu and do you find some of those conversations that you you have with the restaurateur, or the GM, or the chef, or the wine director, culinary director, uh, do you ask them why is this here, and yeah, I, what is the typical response? Uh, they love to talk about it, and yeah. they, they, you know, I've when I get into a Thursday, like I say, I I work all week, and on yeah. Thursday I bring everyone into the room, and I teach them uh, uh, all the tools of menu engineering that I've developed for a couple hours, and so everybody's playing from the same the same playing field. There's a lot of really bad information out there online and people read an article and they think they know everything about menus. Well, <laughs> what I do is I get everybody on the same playing field and so they can make decisions, not just that day, but as they move along yeah. year after year. I, I just ran into an old client. He goes, Greg, we're still talking about your, uh, uh, the ways that you, you do menus with, with us. And, and so, um, and how do you adjust your approach though? Let's say I own one pizza shop, you know, in a small town versus I own a fine dining restaurant in a major city versus I'm a franchise group. How do you kind of go about the different demographics I, of the restaurant itself? I, I do the same process. If it's a hot dog stand and I've done the um, hot dog stands for the bowls at the, uh, the arena, United yeah. Arena that they play in and I've, I've worked on um, uh, the finest of fine dining in, in Hong Kong, you know, so, so um, it's the same process. And, and I go in and I, I start by the first night I'll go in unannounced, you know, like I say, I'll have my trench coat on and Groucho <laughs> Marx glasses and a newspaper with two eye holes. And I, I go into the restaurant unannounced and I get my own experience. And, and then the next day, what we do is I have a uh, state of the menu meeting. So that's when everybody gives me the information to put me on track. So I, what are like the one or two key questions you would ask a team to start off? Like what would you think of the two most important things? That what's working, what's not working, 
what what you've tried that didn't work. Tell me the stories about this menu and and a menu is ever changing and it's growing. It, you know, we weed it and yeah. and we put new uh, menu items on and we fertilize those and and we we really get in and um, and look at it, but but. They love to tell me the stories about about that, and and I it's very informal, and, and and my whole approach is pretty informal and very tactile. I lay everything out um, uh, when we put the menu together. It's all uh, cut and paste, and yeah. I use markers and I use whistles, and nice. uh, it's a lot of fun. And if I'm a restaurateur out there, what would be one or two do's? Like these are two things you should focus on, and one or two don'ts things you should stay away from or things you found over the past that don't work? Well, th the whole key to menu engineering is, is getting a person to find their new favorite item uh, and quickly and in an organized fashion. So if you have menu items with, let's call it, you know, you see these sandwich places where they, they call it the Bob Hope sandwich, yeah. you know, and then you have to read all the description. Well, if you organize that with like roast beef and turkey and vegetarian, now a person can navigate to and away from it. So even if you only have one seafood item, you want to put a seafood section in so a person can navigate to that or if they don't want seafood away from it because the sooner they can zero in and navigate to... And so if you're looking at a menu board and I walk in a restaurant or on a menu, you, you're gonna put together, like you might not have a section for the items, but you might have items that kind of create an undisclosed section so you can navigate the menu of like things right. and bob and weave into it. Right, and then the sooner a person orders, the more they'll order. So they'll start adding on to stuff. Oh, that's interesting. But if they, if they get confused and can't and have a whole out. workbook to go through to figure out lunch, then they'll default and uh, they'll go to a default item. Okay, they'll overwhelm and then default. Mm -hmm. And so I can always tell what the default items are on a, on a disorganized menu. And it's typically um, chicken tenders, you know, is yeah. a t default item. Uh, burgers are a default item. Yeah. You know, you go into a uh, casual chain restaurant and they hand you a pile of menus and bar books and, yeah. and you've got stuff going on and you go, this place has a burger and a beer, take all this work away from me yeah. and, and, and I'll have a burger and a beer. Interesting. That's really interesting. And there isn't a difference between an independent restaurant and a chain. Uh, chain, we have more information, but it takes a chain up to 18 months to put together a menu where an independent, uh, that's, that's not true. I worked on a chain a few weeks ago where they use digital menus, so we did the menu overnight, wow. you know, because it was no new products, it was just reorganizing it. And they came back to me the next day, they could, they could feel the changes. Wow. And so, um, uh, so, but you know, 18 months for a chain to get, to get something on the menu or get a new menu out, versus you know a couple days for an independent yeah. now that independent might not they need to do their homework so we can we can get that done but uh, and and if something doesn't work on the menu we can change it the next day it's no big deal but in a chain it's a whole nother you know to, to move backwards it's a whole nother animal so well this was awesome oh, I've, great. I've learned so much about menus that I didn't even think about we've got about 10 more hours if you want to go. <laughs> Well, what is another way that people can reach out to you if they want to find more information? Well, Greg Rapp, Menu Engineer. I, I, like I say, I've been around for 37 years doing this. So, um, Menu Engineers with an S dot com is our... Uh, um, and we'll link it in the bio. Oh, at thanks. The end of this. Thanks. Yeah. And, uh, uh, but I love to talk. So just call me with your menu and, and we can talk about it and, awesome. and email it to me or I can pull it up online. And maybe and we can pull in a couple of our, our independent clients and, and have them chat with you. You bet. Awesome. You bet. Awesome. Great. Thanks Thank so you. much. Appreciate it.